back on Earth, Mike managed to get his video shots on a TV coast-to-coast -coast hookup. But before the film was halfway through, all the screens were obliterated by the visitor's symbol. But he had shown the world enough. Resistance movements sprung up on every continent. He was marked down by the visitors as an arch-terrorist, and huge rewards were offered for his capture. Mike led a resistance headquarters, assisted by his colleagues from his war correspondent days, and Dr. Juliet Parrish and others, who had managed to contact him, joined forces to fight against the visitors. While the resistance fighters knew they were up against a ruthless, hideous race of alien invaders, they also came to learn that not all of them were bad, that some resented and rebelled against John and Diana's cruelties. In fact, there were cells of visitors' fifth colonists on the mother ships who wished to overthrow Diana and take friendly measures with Earth. The leader of these fifth colonists was a visitor called Martin. He made contact with the resistance movement, and without his help and that of other visitor fifth colonists, the resistance cause would have been hopeless. It was Martin who was responsible for Mike's second secret visit to the mothership. He had shown him great tanks in the hold of the spaceship. Mike had asked, What's going on, Martin? The tanks are full of water. Water? Why water? Pure H2O is the rarest and most valuable commodity you can imagine. One of the first resources industrial society pollutes. You've already started on Earth. We need your water desperately to save us. Indeed, we need everything you've got. But you've been taking water from our reservoirs. We would have shared it. Some of us wished it to be that way. Our leader wants it all. Everything you have. Everything. But Martin, the Earth will be a desert. Our people will die. No, we are taking your people too. Everything. Water, animals, humans. Mike gasped. Humans? So that's where the people of San Pedro and... Martin nodded sadly. Preserved to take back with us. Diana perfected the system. Martin put his arm on Mike's shoulder. Before we came, we thought your Earth was full of sub-animal creatures. Now we know otherwise. That's why we Fifth Column people want to cooperate with you. We can all live together if we exchange our knowledge and amenities. But Diana wants everything you've got. So with the help of Martin and other Fifth Columnists, the Resistance movements caused many problems to Diana and John and the visitors who were destroying the Earth. But no matter what they did, there seemed no way to beat them. Victory for the visitors appeared certain. The Earth would be destroyed. Juliet had been working in her laboratory with fellow resistance scientists for some time. They had been investigating and experimenting with bits of skin and blood samples taken from captured visitors. They had also been using laboratory reptiles. One afternoon, Mike walked into the laboratory. Juliet was quiet and pale. He went to her. What is it, Julie? A serum. A dry serum. I've been working with samples from the visitors. Yes? Well? I accidentally spilt some on the lab reptiles. They all died within seconds. So? But don't you see, Mike? It's harmless to humans. I've breathed masses of it while I've been working, and it has not affected me at all, or any of us working here. Mike was thoughtful. Can I have some, Julie? Of course, Mike, but why? I'll tell you later. The next day, Mike and Ben Taylor, who had joined the resistance with Juliet, went to a nearby water pumping station. High above hovered the visitor's mothership, and shuttle planes were busy adjusting great pipes into the reservoir, siphoning off the water. Ben swore quietly. They're draining us, Mike, drying us up. We've got to act fast. In a few months, it will be too late. Mike held his arm. We'll know if we have any hope within a few minutes, Ben. I hope this works. If it doesn't, remember me to Julie and the others and tell them that we tried. Ben looked grim. I'll keep you covered anyway, Mike, and good luck to you. Mike Donovan strolled up to the visitor guard at the pumping station gate. The visitor looked at him hard. Mike's face was on TV every night as enemy number one. The visitor recognized him, but before he could reach for his side weapon, Mike threw the dry serum dust at him. The visitor choked, gasped, held his throat and fell to the ground dead. Mike strolled back to Ben. It works. So I see. Back at the resistance headquarters, a conference was held. Juliet smiled ruefully. We've got the weapon, but how do we use it? 
It was Ben who came up with a possible solution. A crazy one, but just possible, which relied entirely on the worldwide cooperation of other resistance groups. Within two weeks, however, that was accomplished by clandestine messengers, highly experienced in secret communication methods, and D-Day was planned. When the great day arrived, Mike was sitting just outside their camp looking across the countryside. Juliet sat beside him. All this will be gone if it doesn't work. He held her hand. It will work, Mike. It's got to. When those thousands and thousands of balloons are released at the identical moment all over the world, drifting upwards to the visitor's ships... Mike smiled. I know. And all full of serum dust. Each balloon constructed to release it at the same time so that a cloud of serum dust permeates all around them. Now it all depends on coordination. And on Martin. And Martin had arranged that Diana believed the attack was coming from the Edwards Air Force Base. He had fed information to a scientist who had been under the influence of her thought conversion process scheme. Diana was delighted with her own astute cleverness. While they were still sitting, each with their own thoughts, Martin came over from the camp. He spoke to them quietly. I'm going back to the mothership now. Why not stop here? You'll be safer, Martin. Julie asked him gently. Martin looked up at the distant mothership. I know you have vaccinated me and my fifth column colleagues against your serum, Juliet. I know it would be easier to stay here and watch. I know also that we have managed to convince John and Diana that an attack is being made on them by Air Force planes and that they will never suspect a mass of toy balloons until it is too late. Mike stood up and looked him in the eyes. Well? Martin put his hands on Mike's shoulders. My human friend, I know also there are a few of my brave colleagues up there who have not been vaccinated. I intend to deal with that matter. I must also admit to the desire to see Diana's face when she realizes she has been tricked. She is a disgrace to our species and... Julie kissed him gently on the face. And you are a different species and need to go back to Sirius and continue with your revolution. Exactly. Martin smiled. Exactly. We have enough of your amenities for a while, and I need to return your people who are stored away up there on the mother ships. The two species of beings from Earth and Sirius looked at each other with respect and affection. Eight hours later, Diana and John stood in the observation chamber of the mothership. Diana had a cruel glint in her eyes. Any moment the fools will send up their planes and try and spray us with a serum that the Resistance people believe will destroy us. John looked at her. Will they harm us? Harm us? Have you no faith in my powers of leadership? You are not the leader, Diana. I am. Diana coldly raised her side weapon and shot him. No, John. Not now. I am in sole command. Our great leader will reward me when we return. She stepped to the door. Come in, Stephen. I am in command now. Stephen looked at John's body and grinned. I said our leader had chosen you well, Diana. <laughs> yes, Stephen. The Air Force planes are due here in 20 seconds. <laughs> and we can shoot them down at leisure. My thought conversion process has proved infinitely useful. We shall have fun. <laughs> Stephen looked at the strategy board. What's this? Airborne images, thousands of them. Diana grinned. Fighters, jets. No, they're much too small. There's masses of them. They're climbing as if lighter than air. Diana switched on the view screen. They are balloons, she said incredulously. Is this some sort of joke? They're unattached. Why would they release thousands of balloons and let them rise into the atmosphere? She stiffened, her face contorted with anger. Stephen was puzzled. Do they think this will divert us from the Air Force raid? Diana turned on him savagely. Stupid! The Air Force raid was a diversion. These balloons are arranged to burst at the proper altitude for the bacteria to survive and reproduce all around us. It is obvious. We are finished. But your thought conversion process informer told us... Diana snarled. Someone misled us. We've been fooled. 
Stephen looked at her with scorn. I thought you had powers of leadership. Dinah snapped back. We are all right so long as we are in here. The serum cloud cannot get in on us. She started to cough. <coughs> Stephen clutched his throat. A final look of hatred came over Diana's evil face as she saw Martin enter with his fifth column colleagues and calmly continue to open all the vents, allowing the cloud of reddish-tinged dust to permeate the mothership. Within hours, the human captives from San Pedro and other cities were released by Martin. The motherships were gone, the visitors were defeated. But everyone knew the vital role that Martin and his followers had played. Juliet sat by the old resistance camp holding Mike's hand. She looked up at the infinite depth of the sky. It shows that any race or creed or even species can live together if there is goodwill. Thank you.